Hello and welcome to the third and final part of our How We Built Our Campervan series. Now, this is the last time that we will be filming in Shropshire as tomorrow we leave for Snowdon first, then Scotland and then Europe. Then beyond. Yeah, things have uh, suddenly happened very quick, although the footage you're going to see in this video was filmed over a couple years possibly. This, these videos have been a long time in the making. Uh, but all of a sudden it's right here, right now. We've quit work, we've sold all of our stuff, we've got nothing. Yeah, it's been quite nice to see all the footage back. It has made us smile again, hasn't yeah. it? Just made us realise how much work we have put in and how uh, much we've improved over the last few months. All the important links are below. Go over to our blog to find out more information on anything that you've seen. And if you haven't seen part one and two, get over and check them out. Yeah, and feel free to subscribe because as Meg said, we're off to Europe and we will be filming, vlogging, we don't really know what we're going to be able to produce on the road, but we're going to give it a go. So if you'd like to follow the adventure, please subscribe and press the bell notification for all future updates from our channel. So, quit your jibber jabber, roll part three. This is a somewhat unnecessary step. It was mainly for aesthetic reasons, but the bumper trim does at least add some protection. We bought both of these bits at Buzzfest one year. So we decided to start at the easy part. Firstly, we cleaned down the bumper with a cloth, we peeled back the self-adhesive strips that are on the rear of the trim, and we fitted it into place. This was probably one of the easiest jobs we did. If only the rest of the conversion was that easy. The trim does provide protection from our bike rack and general wear and tear from getting in and out of the rear doors. We then moved on to fitting our sidebars. The instructions were not very clear and poorly translated. We removed the screws from either side of the van to then remove the plastic covers underneath. This job was made more difficult as we had to lie on the floor under the van. We removed small sections of the plastic covers to allow us to fix the brackets. Once removed, we test fitted the brackets to make sure that everything lined up. They used a very strange method to secure the brackets. We aren't quite sure what they're called, but they took us a very long time to figure out. We could have definitely done with some better written instructions at this point. However, once we placed them in position, we managed to fit the brackets, and then it didn't take long to fit the bar. Unfortunately, the other side wasn't so easy. We had to have it welded by a friend in a different spot, as the existing fittings weren't deep enough on that side. A difficult job in the end for something that should have been so simple. Check out the reviews online before you buy. At this point, we knew exactly how much space we had left for our kitchen. We needed to create it around the gas bottle, our 25 litre water container, and our two ring gas cooker hob. We started creating the basic frame out of the exact same wood that we'd used for our bed. At this point, we had become confident in planning, designing, measuring, and cutting the wood for our projects. Once again, we used pilot holes, screws, and glue to attach each length of wood together. We added angle brackets for extra stability. This was definitely going to be our most complex piece of furniture, so we spent a long time working on its design. We chose to create the kitchen unit shelving out of lightweight ply. This would help keep the overall weight of the unit down somewhat. We spent an embarrassingly long time making sure that everything on this unit was a tight fit. We wanted it to be tight to the van walls and the wheel arch. As this piece of furniture was more exposed, any gaps would be really visible.
One tool that would have made the whole conversion so much easier would have been a scribing tool. It would have made awkward jobs like this so much easier. I can safely say it'd be one of the first tools i buy if we were to do this again. We had to offer up the unit multiple times and it did get a bit tedious, but we wanted to get the best fit we could. We did make one big rookie mistake however. For some reason we thought it was clever to glue down and attach the top shelf before measuring and fitting the shelves that would be in the middle. This meant that fitting the middle shelves was a bit cumbersome as we had to cut them in half to slot them into place. It wasn't ideal but also it wasn't the worst mistake we could have made. Once again pallet wood was used to clad the sides and we started to see the unit taking shape. At this stage of the build we were a bit more concerned with our overall weight. So to try and combat this we used thinner and less attractive wood in the areas that would not be seen. Next up we started to plan the cupboard doors. We needed to replenish our pallet wood stash first before we could finish the cupboards. We made a further four doors using our tried and tested method, which was getting quicker every time. We added our signature rope handles and hinged the cupboard doors onto our unit. In these cupboards we've used brass gripper catches to keep them shut. The unit really started to take shape, and most of the sides were complete. We had decided that the gas and water compartment needed easy access, so we fitted a door that was truly removable, again we used brass copper catches. This later evolves into being used as a lap tray, as well as being a door. We had big dreams of making the work surface out of something unique. At a local reclamation yard we found the perfect thing. We wanted to repurpose an old farmhouse door. This was much easier said than done. We got to measuring the door and planning our very strategical cuts. If we weren't careful, the door could easily fall apart if we destroyed its structural integrity. But before we got too carried away with the old farm door, we decided to make sure that our cooker hob was going to be housed safely. We added a few more pieces of wood to section off the cook hob and added a bit more structure. You may be thinking that this is an awful lot of wood to have near our naked flame while cooking, but we do address this issue a little later on. Little jobs like this seem simple, but it pushed us to the edge of our carpentry skills and patience, often having to walk away, rethink and visit it again later. Now for our most nerve-wracking moment, cutting the flip-top lid out of the door. Thankfully, it was a success and it didn't fall apart. Once we'd given everything a good old sanding, it was time to move on to the final stages. Firstly, we secured the new worktop to the unit using good long screws. At this point, we'd finally got our hands on an impact driver. We'd highly recommend you get one of these ASAP. It makes jobs like these so much easier. We opted for black iron style hinges on the lid. These were a great fit and really worked within our rustic theme. It also helped to keep everything really simple. So this is how the basic kitchen unit looked. However, we do add a few more features later on, so stay tuned.
We had debated for a long time whether or not to have a window added to our van, as we wanted to stay stealth. We had discovered that you can reclassify your vehicle's V5C or logbook by completing a list of requirements set by the DVLA. This could lead to cheaper insurance, among other benefits. Fortunately, the list of requirements included many features that we had already installed in Flora. So, the decision had been made. However, this job is something that we didn't really feel confident in doing ourselves. We had thought about it, but we decided to ask the professionals for help. We paid a visit to the gang at Van House in Stafford. Flora was wrapped up and protected, ready for the removal of her top panel in the sliding door. The guys removed the panel carefully and the new glass was prepared. We had chosen to go for a fixed privacy window supplied by the Vehicle Glass Company. More prep work was then carried out. This included removing sharp edges from the cutout, a bonding agent was applied to the outside of the hole, and a rubber trim was installed all the way around the newly cut edge. The window was lifted into position and with the help from tape and clamps held in place, whilst the bonding agent set. We knew straight away we had made the correct decision. The van was lighter, less claustrophobic, but still had privacy. Both companies who helped us have done a great job. We managed to source a retractable table leg and appropriate fittings from BuzzFest. When we purchased these, we didn't actually have a design in mind. But we thought if we had these bits, that would be our starting point and we could work around that. Our good old favourite pallet wood was selected for the design, shock horror. We wanted to use the space under the tall cupboard to store it, so the design was created with those measurements in mind. We made the tabletop in exactly the same way that we had made all our cupboard doors previously. The main thing we focused on was to make sure that all the planks we'd chosen to make the table were of a similar thickness. I waxed the top for a protective layer. At this point we were figuring out where the leg needed to be attached to the table, for ease of storage and also stability when in use. We had to be clever when choosing a suitable method and location to attach and secure the table when it was in use. We fixed the brackets to the table and attached the leg. We decided that the side loading door was the best place to attach our table. To do this we simply screwed the supplied bar to the door. This is where the little plastic hinges will rest. On the underside of the table, we glued felt to avoid damage to the furniture when it was in its storage location. And now the table is complete. Not the world's most practical table, but it works for us and ticks the DVLA's requirement for a table off the list. When not in use, the table lives at the bottom of the tall cupboard. It is secured in place with elasticated bungee cord, carabiners and eyelets. We were really happy with how the table turned out. We were concerned that it would be awkward and take up too much space, but we think our solution works really well. To make the most of the space above the units, we wanted to make a small shelving unit to hold some of our frequently used items.
we measured the space available and made two similar and simple shelves that had to be shaped to the curves of the van. Very simple and rustic, but practical. There are no hinges or drawers, just a few retaining fronts to keep everything in place. We very much enjoyed making these shelves that we call spice racks. Knocked up on a single sunny afternoon, it made us realise how far our skills had come. We also noticed how much more productive we were and how much more enjoyable it was whilst the sun was actually shining. They were screwed down into the worktops and the ply walls behind for extra stability. The real beauty of these little units is that you don't need much at all. Just a few off cuts of wood, a bit of glue and some screws. A couple basic tools and you're good to go. We love the way these shelves display our ingredients, mugs and bowls. Not just practical, but nice to look at and makes a great feature. It was great to see the van in such a usable state already and watching it fill up slowly with pieces of furniture that me and Meg had built with our own hands. We did feel a sense of accomplishment already. We found it really difficult to find a nice camper van tap. We ended up turning to eBay to find something a little bit different. However, we soon realised you could use a domestic tap providing you have the correct water system set up. We found this rather lovely rustic copper pipe tap online. We sunk the tap into the kitchen unit and attached a food grade pipe and jubilee clip to the underside. We tightened up the clip to avoid leaks. Top tip! Place the pipe in boiling water to make it more flexible and malleable. We screwed the tap into position and got to work on the water system. Starting with the pressure switch, this was secured into place and the pipe from the tap was fitted to one end with a jubilee clip. A submersible pump will sit in the fresh water tank and attach to the other end of the pressure switch. We lifted the nearly completed kitchen unit into the van to check everything was okay and ready to go. We added a kill switch to control the water system to avoid any accidents. We fitted a dust cover to the water container. This is to avoid any debris getting into our water supply. We attached the gas bottle harness to the van walls to keep the gas bottle safe and in place. After a bit of tinkering, we now have running water. Another important safety feature we added was aluminium heat protection to the kitchen unit where the cooker lives. We secured this in place using a heat resistant silicon sealant. With using so much wood, it was important that we protected it. We had the aluminium surround fabricated especially for us and it fit perfectly into our kitchen unit. We then secured the cooker in place and made amendments for the gas pipe. We added toy box lid stays to our lift up lid to keep it upright when the cooker was in use. These hinges work really well, and as you can imagine, me and Meg spent about six hours trying to figure out how to actually put them on properly. With the kitchen unit mostly complete, it was time to fix it in securely to the van, anchoring it to the floor. We are so pleased with the final result, especially knowing we had made it from scratch. We have created something practical, rustic, and have plenty of storage.
Even though Flora was beginning to look very much like a camper van, we still had the original seats and fabric and we also needed new foam for our bed. We had always dreamed of having a bespoke finish. We purchased 3 inch foam with a 1 inch memory foam topper. This would be the basis for our bench bed mattress. We needed it to be as comfortable as possible for many nights of quality sleep on the road. Callum's sister owns and runs Joma Upholstery and has helped us create our new bespoke upholstery. Our front cab seats and our bench bed have been transformed. We were lucky enough to design our own upholstery choosing two fabrics that complement each other in our grey colour scheme. We have used a grey nappa fabric which is specifically designed for easy cleaning. It has a texture like suede, it's durable and eco-friendly. The lighter fabric has its own little story. We had quite a bit of a run around to get our hands on it. To cut a long story short, we ended up importing a few meters all the way from Belgium. That's about as much as our input was on the upholstery. We stepped back and left it to the professionals. Now come with us and see the end result. We are in love with it. We have been imagining what it was going to look like for a long time, but this smashes our expectations. Suddenly it felt like we made a huge leap forward. Flora was no longer a van, but had truly become a bespoke tiny home for us, made by us. Now that's enough about the interior, let's go outside and talk exterior. We'd spent a long time looking at awning options for our van. Eventually, we made the decision to go with ARB. We opted for the largest option that we could find. This would give us plenty of room, measuring it 2.5 metres by 2.5 metres. We offered it up and planned how we were going to fit it to our Rhino roof rack. Fortunately, the channel that the bolts fit in span the length of the awning, meaning we have flexibility when fitting. We then measured the distance between the bolts and marked where we would need to drill bolt holes onto the roof rack. This time we remembered to protect the van from swarf by placing down a dust sheet. Any swarf left on the vehicle could potentially turn to rust, so be careful. I drilled four holes in total. It's important to have good quality drill bits to make the job a lot easier. The newly drilled holes were protected with a coat of red oxide to prevent rust. We painted it on and in the holes we had made. After measuring out where the holes were drilled on the roof rack, we slid the bolts into the appropriate positions ready for installation. It would be an easier job with two people but Cal just about managed it on his own. It was a case of tightening up the bolts and we were done. Setting up the awning is a breeze and the fastest time we have achieved so far is two minutes and six seconds. To give us even more options, we purchased an ARB four-sided deluxe room. This simply clips and zips onto the awning frame. Giving us real versatility, a place to stand up and more room to spread out. We are now better prepared for all types of weather. We are truly impressed with the build quality of our ARB accessories. I think we have chosen the perfect awning for our needs.
Finally, we're going to tell you about the things we have added to Flora to prepare for our adventures and make life more comfortable. One of the main game changers was the purchase of a planar heater. It's the most expensive addition to our van. It's simple to use and very effective in heating our little home, making year-round travel a realistic possibility. To help stay organised, we've added storage boxes to our kitchen unit to keep our food and equipment safe when in transit. We've discovered packing cubes to use for our clothes. This helps condense it down and keep it tidy, making the most of the room in our tall cupboard. We also added non-slip rubber matting to prevent the contents of the cupboard moving around when we're on the move. We have a Dometic Ball Bar Cool Box, which will act as our fridge. This is one of the areas of concern for us. I think we neglected fit in a fridge to save on space and money. Under the bed we fitted a safe, toolbox and motion sensor lights. At the rear of the van we have our fire extinguisher and carbon monoxide alarm. Remember, safety first. We added a curtain to divide the cab and living area of the van for privacy, temperature control and to block out the light for our morning lines. A Fiamma bike rack has been fitted to the barn doors to allow us to carry two bikes but still access the rear entrance. Wind deflectors reduce the amount of wind noise when driving but also allow us a small amount of ventilation when parked up. Fuel Lagoon helped us create our personalised windscreen cover. This helps keep the light out, temperature more comfortable and gives us much needed privacy. Our robot's digital radio was also a great investment. We will also be carrying our surfboards on the roof. We've had a rack specially made but we are contemplating simply sliding them on instead. Sorry Sam. Loser, oh, we finally <laughs> made it. All right, three, two, one. No, we'll do it this time. Three, two, one. We have finally made it. I didn't think this day was going to come. The van is finished. Our videos for the time being are finished. We're almost ready to hit the road. Yeah, one day to go. Uh, once again, thank you very much for watching this video. And if you've come to the end and watched the whole of it, we thank you very, very much for doing so. We appreciate you spending your time watching us to mess about. If you want to stay up to date, your best bet is to follow us on Instagram at VW underscore Flora and search for Flora and the Novice Explorers on Facebook. Yeah, so please feel free to follow the journey. Leave us a comment below. We always appreciate that. Send us messages uh, if you've got any questions or any advice for traveling. Places we need to visit. Yeah, we're welcome to all sorts of input. So uh, once again, thank you very much for watching. Peace out. Stay hungry.